back. I did some looking around here after our last episode, and I made a few changes as far as our layout here. For one thing, you might have seen I put a few moss blocks down over here. This is outlining a slime chunk. So I think this is where our slime farm is going to go sometime soon, probably. Hopefully, maybe, possibly. The other thing is we were talking about having our iron farm along with blacksmith and all of those jobs here in this watchtower. I think that's going to be too much. So I think we're just going to put the iron farm here. And then over in this watchtower, that's where our blacksmith, our armorsmith, our weaponsmith, our toolsmith, that whole area is going to go in here in this watchtower. The reason being is I think it would be kind of cool to have a crane that would, you know, lean, be able to spin around and lower down and pick up items from the river here. Now, obviously, it's Minecraft, so I won't actually be able to, you know, have the arm wheel over and bend down and everything but you know we're gonna we're gonna see if we can design a build around that kind of an idea i think i would really like to get our iron farm up and running as soon as possible that would be great i believe i have everything i need in these two shulker boxes we're going to do some birch and oak on the outside, on the very outside. We're going to have a lot of sandstone and a lot of smooth sandstone. We're going to use some glowstone and some glass. And then in this one, those are our beds that we're going to use. We need a minecart and rail to get... I'm probably going to use that to get our villagers all the way up to the, the farm area. And then hopper, chests, and soul campfire is how we're going to kill the, the soul campfires is how we're going to kill the iron golems. And then the hoppers will be able to pick up the items through the campfire. So yeah, I think I'm going to hop right to it. So cue the time lapse. And there is our iron farm. I think this turned out really well, actually. And we can see it's working. There's an iron golem that's going down. Now, technically speaking, there is two iron farms in here. I'm 
pretty sure that we are not going to get double the, the rates for a single iron farm with that design. The reason being is I think they're a little too close. And so one side of the farm is actually going to be um, affected by the other farm, other side of the farm spawning a iron golem. And I do want to change up our little collection system here. This is just a single chest as of right now. I do want a larger storage capacity. So I'm going to change up that. And I've been thinking while I've been working on this iron farm. that it might be a good spot for a jail, actually. So maybe what we'll do is underneath the iron farm here. We'll just set up a little jail cell area. Now, I have to be a little careful because I don't exactly know where the path up to the King's Tower is going to be. And we might be able to fit that just right inside of the mountain itself underneath where, well, I guess over top where our mom farm eventually is going to be, which might be next episode. We'll see. I, uh, I need gunpowder because I'm starting to run out of rockets. So yeah, that is our iron farm. So the next thing that we might end up doing is going caving. I might end up going caving. The reason being is the design for the storage area that I want for the iron farm here needs some redstone. And I am, well, completely out of redstone at the moment. Yeah. But, if we go caving, we should be able to go and find some redstone, and I have been saving this gigantic cavern to go caving with you guys. So, yeah, I think that might be what we do next. So, I needed some coal, speaking of which for more torches, so I went to the place where, you know, I could get some more coal in 1.19, which is another fortress. And I, I broke my hat and I broke my shoes. So yeah, I, um, I'm just down to these pants now in my elytra. But I also, well, I died as well. Oops. Oh well. So that's why my levels are low. But it's not going to stop me from going caving. I think I'm also going to turn on this so that I know where to drop torches. Now this cave system is quite large. So I figured I would do this in the form of a time lapse. That way you guys can see more of the caving. And I can, you know talk about lore of the empire which brings me to the people of the empire now the people of the empire are more along the lines of what people would call action people this is a militaristic empire after all as such the empire does not necessarily eh, value book learning they more value practical learning or, you know, learning on the job, so to speak. And as such, we will not see a library or a university here in the Empire. We may see the occasional librarian in, say, a jail. So that is why I have not been showing the librarians on camera here in the Empire at all. But I am trading with them in the background. As far as resource gathering and self-sufficiency, the Empire does well gathering its own resources, although there are some resources that they aren't able to gather in the quantity that they would like. 
And so they do do trading with other nations in this world. So they might, for example, trade with dwarves in order to get, you know, copper or gold or iron in the quantities that they would like that would match their militaristic style. That caving session went on for uh, quite a while, I'll say. A couple hours at least. And I have a large section of the cave system now lit up. I'm getting very, very close to being all lit up when I stand in my designated AFK spot. But I'll talk about that next episode. So, it did give me enough redstone, and you might see I have my red shulker box here, to uh, make a start on our storage and filter system here at the iron farm. So, I think what I want to do is we'll just come in here and I think we're just going to dig down. Oh, yeah, you may have noticed I'm wearing a hat and I have shoes again. If I can, oh, there they are. Shoes. I, um, I may have died while, while caving and lost an elytra in my bow. So I went end, end rating as well. And then, you know, enchanted it all up. But that's kind of what a gold farm is good for. So, back to the issue at hand. Let's set up a item filter here at the iron farm. All right, so item filters. So the idea is that we have a row of hoppers just going along and going into a direction. The first hopper here is the first place where items are going to enter. So if we go in here, we might see a poppy or an iron ingot appear for a half a second before it gets um, shuffled along to this last one. It looks like currently it may end up in here. Yeah, we have 28 iron ingots in here. So hoppers have a priority. They will first try to be pulled down into a hopper below it. If there's no hopper below it, then it'll go into the direction that it's facing. So this one, you can see there's an arrow going to the right. And this little funnel section is going into this hopper here. So if we were to remove this hopper here we would see some items start filling up this hopper because it'll come into this hopper, go into the next one, and then get pulled down into here. It won't try to go into this last one. So let's see when this iron golem dies. There he dies. We saw an iron in there. We don't see an iron in here. We don't see any iron in here. We do see three iron ingots in here. So that's kind of the priority for iron, for hoppers, I should say. And so we play off of that um, in order to create a filter. So what we can do is we can track how many items are in this hopper using a comparator. And I am going to use stone buttons, but you can pretty much use any item as a filter here. And the, the important thing is, is you just don't want any of these slots open. Now you should pick items that are not going to just naturally be in your, your filter. So if you're using this item filter for your full storage system, then you may want to use items that you can rename in an anvil and just give it some crazy, crazy name so that no other items will match it. And then all of the items will appear here in the first slot. Now, once this gets up to 41 or so, any additional items that get entered into this hopper that this hopper pulls down from above, it'll end up allowing through into the system and we'll end up seeing it here in the chest. So, for example, if I drop this stack of iron in here, you see how that's slowly reducing? And it went up there and down because there was iron coming in from the actual farm. And then now here, once it gets to 41, it stops. 
And if we look in here, we'll see that there's 25 iron ingots in here. I'm just going to drop the rest of my iron in the chest. But that's kind of the idea. So the Id what happens here in the back is when this hopper, when this number of iron ingots goes above 41, so 42, 42, you see that? That allows this redstone dust to get powered, which then powers the block, which then the repeater gets a signal from, and it'll power this block, which then unpowers the torch, which then unpowers this block, which then allows this hopper to allow items to drop down. The next thing I want to do is I want a few more chests here. So we're just going to lower this down one more or a couple more blocks and allow space for the hoppers and then chests. You need to be a double. Ah, you need to be a double chest. All right. And then hoppers in. And now our filter system should allow, should fill up bottom to top, left to right, because that's the direction that our hoppers up here are going. I think I will set up a row for the poppies, but I don't really need that many poppies. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to compost them. And so that'll turn into bone meal, which I will use. So, good. So I'm just gonna put Poppy into the, the hopper that points into the comparator. And then fill in my filter items. And this one again is gonna be another row of iron ingots. So I'm just repeating the same filter that I have over here. All right. Now, the last thing I wanted to do, at least down here, is going to be setting up a overflow protection. So, do I have what I want here? I think so. So I'm going to take a dropper, and I want to go like this. So this dropper is pointing downwards. And then I'm going to take a cauldron. I'm going to put it directly underneath. And then we're going to turn this uh, dropper to, I think people in the, in the community are calling this a smart dropper. So we take a comparator and that goes into this block. And then we run, have a dust here, dust here, and then I have a block on top. This block essentially cuts off the dust and turns it into this plus shape instead of what it would be otherwise as this connected um, redstone. That essentially allows this dust right here to be able to power this block here. So we cut that off and then we run that into a repeater, which then will allow this redstone dust to hook up to the comparator and this comparator will say, hey, there's items in the dispenser. That's a stronger signal than this redstone dust right here. So I'm gonna send out a signal and then it essentially sends out a pulse and it will trigger the dispenser to dispense an item or in this case, a, a dropper to drop an item. And then we need one more block here for this redstone dust to um, power all the way through to the dispenser. And then we are just going to run a line of hoppers up here. So now if these two, if these six chests all fill up and another iron ingot goes, goes past, so it can't, it can't go into here because this is at 61. I can't go in here because an iron ingot doesn't match the poppy and it can't go into any of these other slots. It'll continue on and then get put into the dropper and then the dropper will drop into this cauldron. The other thing we need to do is hook up a, a lava bucket or put a lava bucket into the, the cauldron. 
I just want to confirm that everything is right before I do this. Okay. Put the bucket in there. And the nice added benefit is that uh, it definitely brightens up the entire area in here. I'll just throw in a couple more torches just to make sure. And I think that's our filter system along with storage and overflow protection. Now we just need to hook up a better, you know, entrance and exit than what we have here. I have finished kind of blending in our pillar here with the, the sand of the desert. And our entrance is now down here. And I tried to make this look like a, like a sand formation here as an entrance. And then you can come in here and access all of the iron. Then I also put a ender chest here because uh, I think it's very useful for being able to access my iron chest, my iron shulker. And I am probably always going to try to keep at least two and a half stacks of iron blocks in here. So that if I ever need to make a beacon, I have enough base materials in order to do it. So, yeah, I think that's going to be the iron farm done. I will probably make some adjustments, like I might pull the birch logs down and cover up the stone there. But, I don't know, it's, it's good enough for now. And it's supposed to be kind of hidden and not visible to the outer world. But, yeah, so I think that's the iron farm. And now, without any further ado, because if I don't do it now, I might not do it this episode. Yeah, it's been one of those nights. So let's get to it.
really like how the crates of gold and copper ore turned out on this side. And that one's for iron. There's only a single piece in there. So. Um, I like the nether wart on here, but I think I may have gone a little overboard with the glow lichen. Yeah, I may end up pulling some of that back, but we'll see. We'll see. So, in here, ground level, we have our villagers. We've got a toolsmith, an armor smith, and a weaponsmith. They're all at max level and fully cured, so all of their trades are won. So that is kind of our entryway, and I... I had the hardest time coming up with an idea for what to use as a roof. And then it hit me. I just use blast furnaces and regular furnaces. That way I can, you know, actually use this area as my smelting area. So, if we move up here to the, the first layer. This is going to be like the main source of the forge. And it probably doesn't make sense that it's on the... You know, not on the ground floor, but I think it, I think it looks pretty good. Got some uh, ancient debris, and then this would be like where the hottest materials would be smelted. So that would be the, the ancient debris. The hottest materials to be smelted? No, the, the materials that need the hottest furnace to be smelted. So that would be ancient debris. And then coal as fuel. So yeah, and more furnaces and blast furnaces up here. It's a nice look out. I considered building another crane up there to lift up the, the ancient debris up here. But I decided against it kind of at the last minute. Who knows? Maybe I'll end up building another crane. But I figure with something like ancient debris and coal and something that they need a lot of, that's coal and something I imagine would be quite heavy as in ancient debris. They would probably set up like a conveyor belt or something like that. And it would be able to be put up and loaded and then taken down again. But uh, that's the idea anyway. So if we go up to the next layer, this is our iron layer. So we can see there's uh, you know, blocks of coal in here. I am missing chains. Then this is a deep slate coal ore. This is actually one of the more rare blocks in the game. Coal does not generate very deep anymore. So, got a lot of iron. And as we can see, we recently received a shipment of iron. And it's completely filling up our, uh, our loading dock here. So that's why this basket is pretty much empty. So let's continue up to the gold and copper area. So you can see in here, this is pretty empty. There's only just a couple blocks of, you know, gold and copper left to smelt. And so that's why our shipment is here. So yeah, I think this turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. And I think with one more look at this building, I think that will do it for today. So. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.